Hey everyone, my name is Boulevard. Welcome to my set review speed run for the Rising Tides. Now, as a caster and a commentator and an analyst and things like that, I think it's important that I put one of these out. But I know that these can drag on. I've done set reviews for games in the past and they can really get up there in time. I'm talking hours, especially with 120 cards, you know, a whole new region coming out, there's a lot to cover. Instead, I know that, you know, there's going to be a lot of set reviews from a lot of the big names. So how do I make mine stand out? Why do you want to watch mine? Because it's short. And I'm dressed like a sailor because it's bilge water. So I'm going to be limiting myself to 15 seconds per card. That should be actually ample time to tell you whether or not a, could, a card is good or bad. Uh, if it's meta defining or not. And yeah, we're going to get right into it. Because why would I speed run and then take 10 minutes on the intro? It doesn't make any sense. To the cards! This isn't necessarily the hill that I'm willing to die on. But I do think this card is extremely overrated. You really only want to play it if you're all in on the Fizz plan. Which is a viable strategy since Fizz can take over a game. But I encourage you to fill out your deck with one mana burst speed spells from other regions. Before you ever think about playing Warning Shot. I like this card more than Legion Saboteur. It fills a different, or it fills the same role rather, but in a different region. And I think if Bilgewater Aggro is going to be a thing, I think you're going to see the card in the deck, and I like it. It's kind of hard to look at the region overall and decide how much toss you're going to need in a toss deck, but I do think that Dreg Dredgers is one of the better, it's a better option than the Burst Speed spell, so it's probably going to have to make its way into your toss deck, unfortunately, but you can just toss it. What do you care? This card seems a little bit misleading to me because it doesn't say until end of turn or end of round, rather, like every other card that would function like this does, and it has the ability to take it over a game, but I encourage you not to go all in on this plane and please find a supplementary win condition. I don't, I don't think this is it. This ain't it. If Bill's Water Agger is a thing, this probably gets played, but this ain't it. What the fuck is this? Uh, I think I like Dreg Jedgers better than this. You might have to play both. It's kind of hard to tell just based on how much toss there is or isn't. It's really hard to just like look at toss in a vacuum and decide how much you're going to need, but I don't think you're going to have to play this card. I don't think Parlay is playable. If it was more like Mortal Coil where you got to draw a card if you killed something, then absolutely. But uh, even in a Fizz deck, just because it's slow, I don't think this is what you want to be doing in any situation. It sucks that this is a Gangplank spell. I love this guy. I'm going to take the full 15 seconds just to look at him. He's so sick, dude. He's so, Look, I fucking love him. Terrible card, terrible card. Get, don't get me wrong, terrible card, but God, I I love this. It's cards like Pool Shark that make me think Bilgewater Aggro has a chance in the meta. This seems very good, especially in a low-cost deck if you're going for the Fizz plan. But it's kind of hard to balance the units and spells in a fizz deck but i think pool shark is definitely definitely what you want to be doing in a bilgewater aggro deck fearsome and elusive don't really matter here it's a one mana one one it's it's nothing i feel like this card is actually pretty hard to evaluate until we can actually see what the fizz decks are going to come together as and i don't mean in the first three days i mean over the course of the first two weeks of the format we're really going to have to see where shell shocker comes in but i could see it becoming a mainstay in the fizz decks maybe not at the end of the line for fizz decks but somewhere in the middle uh, I don't really like this card really at all. It's it's a really like I what kind of deck would you even put this in? Not an aggro deck, certainly. A mid-range deck? Probably not. It's just so awkward. So I actually like this card a lot, especially in an aggro deck. I think a 2-mana two 2-2 two two is a fine stat line, and then drawing one card out of your opponent's deck and reducing the cost by one. You assume that your opponent is playing good cards, and if they're not, then, you know, you're going to beat them anyway. But I definitely think this guy's a really good standalone card, as well as just supporting a, a cool archetype that might be a little bit much to all in on. I actually like this guy a lot uh, because I think that he is everything that the Fizz deck wants. He automatically creates a spell that you can play, and it's probably going to be burst speed as most one speed one cost spells are. So, I like this guy a lot actually for Fizz decks. I don't like powder kegs. It, it feels like spell damage with extra steps, and I could be wrong here, but the spell damage with extra steps that takes up board space. I'm not a fan of powder kegs, so I'm probably just going to hate every single card that makes powder kegs. I don't think this is that good. I mean, the vulnerable doesn't say it goes away at end of round, but granting the strongest guy vulnerable, what are you challenging it with? There's no poisonous or toxic or whatever you want to call it in this game yet. Nothing that just one-shots units, so I don't really like this. Uh, the Shadow Isle archetype is pretty... Like, the, the Toss Maokai stuff doesn't seem to fit in with anything else that Shadow Isle wants to do, so I think Spider decks are going to stick around. And I like this versus Spider decks, but not much else. I don't like Powder Kegs. I like this card a lot. Two mana draw two at burst speed is absolutely phenomenal. It's how the Fizz decks are probably going to have to maintain advantage. And you imagine if you run into a Fizz mirror, like something like this is going to be really good. So if Fizz is as good as I and everybody thinks it is, if it works the way I think it does, Pilfered Goods is going to be insane. Look at him. This is a very cool picture, but it's nothing. I don't, I don't think this is anything. I love this card. Uh, three mana, four, three is already overstatted. And then, you know, plus one to all allies that cost one. So that includes Fizz. That's great. Don't run warning shot for this. I actually don't mind this card. It's kind of like a Trifarian Glory Seeker. A little bit worse uh, because it does cost more, but being able to create the random sea monster is pretty cool once you've upgraded the Nautilus. Beforehand, it's not great. So overall, I'd have to like actually see a few Nautilus lists. Before. I definitely think you'll like, try this in a Nautilus list, but I wouldn't be surprised if it got cut early. 
I feel like this is okay, maybe not. Is you know the sea monsters are expensive, obviously, but if you can, like if you can get off a couple of these and you know you get off like three of these, sure, the card's insane. So maybe that's worth it. You know, maybe this is good enough. I, I'm definitely looking forward to trying it. If there's one thing Fiora and Draven have taught me, it's that three mana three threes that are good just fit into decks, and I think that's kind of the spot that Misfortune's going to take up. I don't think you ever level her up without scouts, but you know I like her. I like her. I don't like this one. The powder monkeys are pretty underwhelming. The fact that you have to sit here and make two of them. No, I don't like it. I don't even know what you would try and run this in. I don't like powder kegs or random one cost allies, and I don't like three mana three ones. I really like this because you can hit other fleeting cards, so it kind of builds on its own game plan. Like a pick a card into a pick a card on the following turn actually gets a lot of value. It's a really good burst spell for the fizz to go off with, and yeah, I just overall like this card. I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, if you are going for things like the pick a card plan and you're just trying to draw a bunch of cards in a turn, or if you're playing like Piltover and rummaging into things, then I could see this getting value. But overall, three mana for a plus two, plus one, just didn't, that's not it. This is the closest we've gotten to a discard spell in Runeterra, so I'm interested to see the ramifications of that. I'm definitely going to be keeping a very close eye on this card. This sucks. I don't see this card getting played outside of discard aggro, and if you are playing discard aggro, you know that it can be hard to maintain three cards in hand, and by three I mean her and the two cards you need to discard her. If you can play her without having two other cards in hand to discard, she's broken. Otherwise, I don't think she sees any play. Obviously, a 5-1 with Overwhelm for four mana isn't great on its own, and then giving something vulnerable feels like it doesn't really matter for how easy to kill that 5-1 is, but it still gives the thing vulnerable, and overall, I don't like this card. Creating it off of Fizz is cool, but I don't think you put it in your main deck. I'm, like, having a lot of trouble actually evaluating this card. I mean, you can high roll some pretty good one costs, especially to give Scout to, like Legion Rearguard. You could push through as much as five damage with this thing, but uh, I feel like the low rolls are really low, and overall, it's just not going to be worth it. I don't think this is good. There are some stinker five cost followers, and uh, even then, like, just hoping that your one one stick around. Like, I guess if you're playing Powder Kegs, this is kind of cool, and it's not a skill, so it automatically goes off. Uh, but I'm not loving it. Uh, yeah, I don't mind this card. Getting a Rally effect in Bilgewater seems pretty cool. I like that they've expanded Rally beyond Demacia, but it, removing an al attacking ally from combat, sure, you're going to have some weak guys, so that doesn't really matter. It's really the one mana that I'm worried about, so I'm um, kind of... Jury's still out on this one. Stun is a cool mechanic, but there's not a lot of stun in Bilgewater, so it's not like you can run Bilgewater as a secondary to Yasuo, and stunning an enemy, sure, you know, it's a one mana more Steel Tempest if you have Nautilus out, you shuffle the guy in, but overall, if you have Nautilus out, I feel like you're in a commanding position anyway, I don't know if this is what you need. This card's insane. I have two, four mana draw two, to the toss two doesn't matter, this is really, really good for aggro decks, I don't know if, uh, you know, anything else is going to play it, obviously toss decks are going to play it, but this is real, put this in your aggro deck. This is the cheapest sea monster, and if reduced costing of sea monsters works how I want it to, for example, you put this down to a three cost with the sea monster spell, and then, you know, it gets tossed later. If Nautilus puts this back in your deck, then I like the both the cards in combination, but overall, I just, I love the sea monsters and the Nautiluses, so I'm definitely biased. I think this card's cool. Does that answer your question? I want to play Twisted Faith, but honestly, 4-mana 2-2 two is just... I don't think you're ever going to see this guy live to evolve. Sure, you can draw off a lot of cards very quickly, but I don't know if you can draw 8-plus cards in a turn, and dying the Mystic Shot sucks. That hurt to say. It's... I'm not sure that we're going to get into a spot where you can actually play Allegiance Bilgewater, so just creating a Warning Shot in hand for your 4-mana 3-3, three, three, you're on the same level as Babbling Bjerg in terms of stats and costs, so I don't, I don't think you're going into anything there, Mr. Grifter. Four mana 2-2 two, two elusives have kind of fallen off, but honestly being able to uh, draw a spell that costs three or less from your deck I think puts a lot of value onto this, and I, I like Zap Sprayfin a lot, like a lot, lot. It's an elusive, nexus-striking, drawing sea monster. I f love this thing, man. This is so cool. I love it. I absolutely, this is awesome, dude. I get to draw cards, and I'm elusive, I'm a sea monster, I got deep, this is the best. What did I say about powder kegs? Overall, I think it's pretty non-controversial that Gangplank is almost certainly the weakest Bilgewater champion. Maybe Twisted Fate is a little bit lower, but Gangplank and TF, unfortunately, I just don't think are going to find homes. Unless Powder Kegs pop off a lot more than I think they're going to. But his spell also sucks. There are a number of decks that actually just have a hard time dealing with a big guy, and even if you have to play this and immediately attack the Narwhal, getting down a 5 minus 7 5 is not terrible. It's pretty hard for some decks to deal with, and I definitely don't hate it, especially in Bilgewater aggro. I like that he's a scout. I like that he gives something vulnerable. He's a little understated, and honestly, I'm not sure that I love Bilgewater scouts. Demacia scouts are cool because you get things like standalone and more scouts, but I don't think the Bilgewater scouts are all that. A 5-mana 4-4 elusive is kind of cool. Yuseri never saw play. He was only one toughness left, but as we saw with Yasuo, one toughness makes all the difference in the world, and a tune is better than challenger, so... 
I could see him seeing some play, but honestly, he's just kind of vanilla. I don't know how many decks he's actually going to fit into. My answer would be not a lot. If Bannerman decks still exist in any capacity and they're not going for Ionia, I definitely think Bilgewater is a reasonable secondary region, and I think Citrus Courier is a big reason for that, as well as just being good in just about any other kind of deck. I think Citrus Courier is a very, very good card. I love things that obliterate things. Six mana 4-4 four, four is pretty underwhelming. If you've got the deep buff, though, and the sea monsters start coming out, and they're big, and they're 7-7s, seven, seven, like, I think this guy's really good. And even just as a 4-4, four, four, uh, because it's less health than me, I'm pretty sure you can obliterate things that are damaged and have less health than him, so I, I definitely, definitely like the sea monsters, and I like the devourer of the depth. I don't like double up as much. Uh, dealing two damage to a unit is cool, but for six mana, that's a lot. I'm sure you can hit the Nexus for four, but it has to kill it. So if I do something like Glimpse Beyond in response, then this just fizzles and you feel goofy. As cool as vulnerable it is, I don't think it's as good a mechanic as Sheriff Lurit Rose seems to think it is, and I don't think this is going to see a lot of play. This is actually interesting. It's one of the only answers in the game to Commander Ladross, so I think it's interesting, at least in that regard. It's going to take some playing with to figure out a space for it. I definitely don't think you're going to see this in any Week 1 decks, but I think it's going to come out as pretty strong down the line, especially if we can get into a secondary tertiary-style format for tournaments. There's not a lot of toss in Bilgewater, but there is a lot of card draw, so I think it's actually pretty easy to get to deep, especially if you're just drawing cards that are fleeting and then discarding them. So I definitely like Nautilus more than I like Maokai, and I'm very excited to play with this card. This is just a worse vengeance. It's a vengeance that loses to Barrier. It's not good. Uh, I really don't think this is, is very good. This card's great. I love every single treasure. This one's probably one of the hardest cards to get into in, in 15 seconds, but I will say that I'm a big, big fan. Solid, like, 8 out of 10. I love it. I haven't been able to come up with any combos that this card goes with. I haven't really tried very hard, but it definitely seems like a combo card. Uh, so we'll kind of have to see where that comes out. I definitely am not good at building combos from the ground up. I really do like the cards that search for champions, especially if they're integral to your strategy, but I feel like Misfortune is more of an aggro champion and playing something like the high costed unit like this to find her, I don't think is gonna make the cut in a lot of Misfortune decks. I don't really like this card without elusives. Pack Mentality is pretty similar and Pack Mentality didn't seem that much play and it, that gave Overwhelm. So I don't think Mind Meld is really, gonna, as cool as it is, I don't think this is gonna see any play. I think the playability of Riptide Rex is going to come down to whether or not he still fires the cannon barrages if there are no units on your opponent's field to and just still deals one to the Nexus. Because if he can just come down on an open board and deal seven to the enemy Nexus, I think that's really good. Otherwise, he's still actually pretty good. You know, just randomly firing off 14 damage onto your opponent's board is very good. I like Riptide Rex a lot, but he's pretty high end. Reminds me a bit of Rasa, uh, but I think he can make the cut. I don't really like Gangplank that much, and I don't, I don't know if this counts for Powdered Kegs. I would assume that it has to, otherwise this card seems pretty useless, but overall, 9 mana for a 4-8 Fearsome is not good. I don't think this is better than Chain Vest, and I'll let you kind of take that how you will in terms of its playability. I think this is a fine spell for Quinn to have as her champion spell, but I don't think you ever main deck anything like this. I think that's a little bit all in on the scout plan, whereas you want to be more of a standalone deck rather than going wide with scouts, and this probably isn't going to get a whole lot of value. Not the best standalone target in the world, but as a tough scout, you know, he's not the worst either. Getting a 5-5 five, five tough scout is pretty good. I think he makes the cut for standalone decks that go in all in on the scout plan. I'm not going to lie, this showed up on the card database, and I'm pretty sure you can only make it off of the other guy, but uh, honestly, if I can main deck a loyal badger bear, I'm going to main deck a loyal badger bear. All right, Grizzle Ranger's broken. He's a scout. He makes Loyal Badger Bear, and, you know, I want to main deck a Loyal Badger Bear, so I'm definitely going to main deck a card that lets me make more Loyal Badger Bear. This is what it looks like when you jam two single combats together, and it's ugly. It's not good. If you're going all in on the scout plan, sure, you can play this guy, but if you're going for a standalone type deck, which I think is what the scouts are going to at least start off as, I don't think this guy's going to get in there. I like Quinn more than I like Misfortune. It's definitely a lot easier for her to actually get the level up off, and I do think that her leveled up version is pretty good. So overall, yeah, you know, there's not much to say about Quinn. She's good. Everybody knows that. With the Bannerman decks having become what they are, I do think something like this can make the cut, especially since I would expect scouts to start making their way into that deck. I don't think you replace the, any number of Scythria with this, but honestly, you might, depending on how good the scout mechanic actually turns out to be after a few weeks of rigorous testing. I like this card a lot, and this is my first time seeing or hearing of it, honestly. You can still strong arm it, and you can still will of Ionia it, but there's really not a lot of ways to get rid of the card, and if you can get it down onto something with lifesteal, you might just never be able to die. Historically, slow frostbite effects are pretty bad, and I don't think Cotton the Cold is going to change that. This reminds me a lot of Academy Prodigy, although having Tough and Overwhelm is pretty good. I think it's really good if you're running a Plunder-type failure deck, which I do think we are going to see at least a bit of, so I definitely don't hate it. 
I actually like this card a lot. Two mana draw card is something that I think people would play. So granting the top three units of your deck, the plus one, plus one, and then drawing one of them, I think this card is actually pretty good. This is honestly one of my favorite cards from the set. I think this is the easiest and probably best way to turn on plunder for any kind of deck that wants to run plunder. And over, yeah, I just, I think this card's really good and underrated perhaps. I haven't really seen anyone talk about this. I'm pretty sure this isn't good. It's cool in a pinch if you have Sejuani out and you play Sejuani's Fury of the North, but I don't think you main deck this card. This is pretty cool, honestly, a four mana four three. If you're going for a plunder strategy, which you would be if you're playing a plunder card like this, you know, it, it fits the theme and it does what Freljord does. Overall, I think it's a well-designed card. How much play is it gonna see? Nah. Just when Yetis got buffed and started to see play, we get Ursa Spirit Walker. How blessed are we? We're gonna see this Stormclaw Ursine tearing people apart with Yetis, and I'm very excited for it. Sejuani's probably been one of the hardest champions for me to evaluate because in order to get value out of her uh, other side, I feel like you really need to be an Ash deck and you're just trying to go for lethal, which isn't bad if you're playing a plunder style deck, which I think you are if you're turning on her ability in the first place. So an Ash Sejuani plunder deck sounds like the way to go with this. That doesn't sound good in my head, but we'll have to see. Aurora Porealis? Aurora Porealis. I definitely think this is the best draw a champion card that we've seen so far, and uh, doubling the power and health of all allies in your deck is absolutely great. I think this card's really good, and I definitely think it's going to see play if Sejuani sees play, but honestly, I don't think Sejuani's going to see play. It's hard to tell how much spell aggro Ionia is going to become a thing thanks to Lee Sin, and I feel like the answer's not at all, and I, I really don't think this is going to see that much play. I actually like this card a lot, like a lot, lot, because the thing that it creates has lifesteal. I think this is a great anti-aggro tool for karma decks that are trying to make it to the late game. I'm a huge, huge fan of this card. I think this card's okay. It's um, arguably better than Shadow Shift given the changes. Obviously, it's not great if you do it onto a big guy. Uh, the fact that the return is fleeting kind of sucks, but overall, I think this card's uh, eh, it's probably not going to see play if I'm being honest with myself. This one definitely isn't going to see play, I think. I mean, it's three mana. You can basically get a, anything to kill anything, at least in the early game, but it's uh, it's a little dicey there. I don't know how I feel about this guy. Like, the dragon's protection is cool. The fact that it's not fleeting is cool. The fact that it's slow sucks, but honestly, what do you expect for a permanent plus zero, plus three? Uh, so overall, I don't think he's going to make the cut. Uh, I just don't really see this being like a good combination of things to do in Ionia. This card I actually like a lot. Um, it's Ionia Stun, so Yasuo likes it. It gets a pretty cool guy that if you can recall, then you know you get back Concussive Palm. So maybe you get to do some cool stuff with like Recall and Niftivori Conspirator. Uh, overall, I think it's a little overcomplicated and not gonna actually end up seeing play, but I'd like to be proven wrong on that one. So because this card gets spells out of your deck instead of random spells, I think playing this in a deck with things like Eye of the Dragon and the Karma decks, I think this card might actually see main deck play, whereas like Karma's Insight never really did. This is like kind of what Karma's Insight wanted to be, and I'm very excited to see how that impacts the deck. I think it's a good card. As far as I know, this is the first unit that we've seen that just naturally has double attack, and I don't think that matters. A 6 mana 4, 6, I don't think that gets it done. I actually like Lee Sin as a win condition for Karma decks, and I think that it's pretty easy to get into the late game now there with things like Eye of the Dragon. Can't express how much I love Eye of the Dragon enough. Um, and I think Lee Sin is just a good overall Karma win condition if you just want to use your secondary region as a supporter rather than the win con that Karma supports. So this is like a one mana more slow atrocity. Uh, I don't think Ionia is necessarily the region that you want to see this in. The fact that Lee Sin gets to cast it for free when he attacks is cool, but I don't think you actually play this card. Unless you're playing Vi. I could be wrong here, but I don't think this card is that good. If you're kill if you're dealing four damage to a stun unit to kill this, that means you already spent a card to stun the unit. And sure, maybe you used Arachnoid Sentry, but even then, this seems like a little bit much. I honestly just think this is a little bit too difficult to get off. If you're going to be damaging things for free, then you might as well just play Noxian Guillotine. I like this a lot. I hate that it's a skill instead of just being burst speed, but um, I like this a lot for the Battle Scars decks. And I think that's kind of what Swain has been supporting is the Battle Scars decks, which decks are decks that I like. So I'm excited to see those get support. And I think this is a good card for it. I don't think this card's very good. Three mana to deal two to an enemy unit and one to the Nexus is like kind of whatever. It's, you know, a little bit more valuable than Mystic Shot, but the one mana for the one on the Nexus I don't think is enough. Uh, and it's not a great anti-aggro tool, which is what I want out of a card that deals two damage. So eh, maybe not. Uh, this is a pretty big guy in terms of stats and with Overwhelm. I think this makes it into just about every, like, Jinx Draven deck. I think it's one of the best three mana cards for those outside of Draven himself, so I'm definitely excited to see this for aggro decks. Uh, I get that the point of this is that Swain doesn't say he has to deal 12 non-combat damage to the Nexus, so I believe you can hit your own things like this. I like it for Braum decks. Um, and I think I really only like it for Braum decks, but if you're running, you can't, I don't think you can fit Swain, Braum, and Vlad into a Battle Scars deck, so you're gonna have to make some cuts there, but I like it if you do stick with the Braum plan. 
Because there aren't any plunder effects in Noxus, I don't think I like this, and because there are no plunder effects in Noxus, I think it's a weird uh, region to pair with a plunder deck, and I don't think City Breaker is a good enough reason to pair Noxus with your plunder deck, but we'll see. I don't think this makes it a cut, though, in anything. Swain's been a card that I think about a lot. Uh, I think he kind of replaces Vladimir in what Vladimir wants to be doing, and I think Swain Braum could be a deck that we see, and just Swain taking over as the Battle Scars uh, champion. And he's more versatile than that, so I definitely think he's a he's a good card. Like a solid like six, seven out of ten. This guy's actually pretty cool. He's survivable in a way that we haven't seen before, and just having overwhelm. But as a six mana six five, like this is Darius mana, and sure, you know it's a little bit harder to kill than Darius, but I don't think we're seeing this coming in any deck really. I like this guy a lot for Yasuo specifically. I think this hyper accelerates Yasuo turning on as well as just like turns Yasuo into an execute machine. And I think this lets you get away without playing things like Ferocious Roar. So I'm excited to see this in, in Yasuo decks, but I don't think it really comes out in anything else. I also think this is a pretty good draw champion card. It, you know, it does what Swain wants to do. A 5-8 overwhelm is a little tough to deal with. Like just high toughness on units is pretty hard to deal with in Runeterra. There's a lot of damage based removal. So when you don't have to do that, I think it's pretty cool. And I think Leviathan, if you see a more mid range to late game Swain deck, which could be the Battle Scars deck, I think Leviathan can make the cut. This card seems cute, but I'm hard pressed to imagine myself actually putting it in a deck and then not immediately cutting it. Obviously it's bad to let your opponent draw cards and you know, maybe you need to draw cards in your own aggro deck, but I think Jinx should be enough draw power for you. And because you're in the same region as Jinx, I don't think Veteran Investigator gets to see any play, which sucks because he has some cool voice lines with Vi. I don't think this is as good as Iron Ballista, especially if you're going for PNZ Noxus aggro, which I would assume you are. I haven't really seen anything that makes me think that PNZ is gonna be paired with something other than Noxus, uh, but overall not a fan of this card. I don't think you're going to see this in anything outside of Vi's Vault Breaker. I don't think you put Vault Breaker in a deck. I think if this card was just split the difference in a 3 mana deal 3 to a unit, it would see play because of Heimerdinger, but overall I don't think 4 mana deal 3 to a unit is uh, something that any PNZ deck wants to be doing. Maybe I'm missing something here, and there is some PNZ deck that wants to shit out a bunch of 2 cost cards, but I'm not seeing it, and I'm not seeing this card in any deck in my head. I get that PNZ is supposed to be the region that draws more cards thanks to Rummage and Progress Day and Jinx, but I really actually don't like this top deck reduce the cost mechanic. I think that the cards are just too awkward to include in a deck, and you're going to run into a lot of situations where the math just doesn't line up on the value versus the cost, and you shouldn't main deck any of these cards. I want to sit here for 15 seconds and meme on this card's name, but honestly, I don't think it's that bad. If you've played 10 to other cards with different names, that's actually pretty feasible to do. Every time I randomly create a Pursuit of Perfection in my hand, I've played like 11 or 12 cards, and a 5-mana five 5-5 five five elusive that draws a card is pretty good. I could see the seeing play. I think Vi's really good. And I think, I, like, that's pretty just much just a known fact. Like, Vi's good. There's, Vi's good. Vi's good. There's, uh, there's nothing to say. I only need 15 seconds. This is why I can do this in 15 seconds, because Vi's good. What else do you need to know? I think it's six mana. You're really not going to see this find a home anywhere in PNZ. There's no real, I, I don't think I've ever played more, more than five for a PNZ unit in my life, and that's only Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger is a special exception, too. He says win the game, basically, so... I don't think this is going to see anything, unless we can find a cool combo with it, but as previously mentioned, I can't build combos from the ground up, it's just not my wheelhouse. I don't think this is as good as Hapless Aristocrat, even for the aggressive decks, I don't think this is going to end up seeing play in anything. I don't really love the saplings, and the fact that it does it next round is a little bit awkward, I don't think this sees play in anything. Because you need to toss so many cards to turn on Maokai, I feel like you're going to have to play this, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of Maokai, I'm going to, I like Nautilus more, but honestly, like Maokai, I just, I don't see it. Like, I see the appeal, but I don't see it happening. It's kind of weird because I feel like I like saplings in theory in other games, but honestly, I'm not sure I love them here. It does give Shadow Isle a few more anti-aggro tools, but I feel like Shadow Isle is the one region that's been fine in dealing with aggro. So I, I don't know that the saplings are, like, really going to find a home in any deck. This guy's actually pretty good, you know? He's a, he's a lifesteal unit with a pretty good attack line, and then tossing three is good because there's not a lot of toss in Shadow Isle. So, yeah, I, you know, I like him for the Maokai decks, but I don't really like the Maokai decks, so... Uh, like 5 out of 10. I, I could see him getting played in things that aren't Maokai too, though. Just ha having an early lifesteal unit is cool. I don't think you main deck this card in anything. Like, it's cool that this is Maokai's spell, so, like, I like that I'll have access to it, but I don't think you main deck this. I feel like I'm in love with Maokai because when he makes saplings, I like it, but when anybody else makes saplings, I don't like it. But I also don't like Maokai, but I'm in love with him. You know what I'm saying. 
I like that we get a second prankster. Uh, I think prankster aggro is a pretty cool strategy in getting a second one, and this one giving you some life gain as well. I actually am pretty excited to see what this does for the prankster deck. I actually like overgrown snapvine. It has the potential to take over a game. Unfortunately, with only three health, it's pretty unlikely that it happens. Uh, we're going to see some combo decks come out with this, but I don't know if they're going to be mainstays in the meta. So like, you might get bodied by this day one, but I'm pretty sure on week one or week two, you're, you're, these are going to be out of the meta. I like this card because it's a sea monster, and sea monsters remind me that Nautilus exists, and it's really hard for me to judge sea monsters because I'm going to have to cram all of them into my Nautilus deck and try them all out, but having my other sea monsters gain fearsome just makes Shadow Isle a pretty good secondary tool for the Nautilus deck, uh, and I like this card a lot. It's just such a good engine in itself for the sea monsters specifically. Hey guys, in the interest of time in terms of getting this video out and not spending a billion hours editing it, I didn't have time to make a fancy graphic, but I did want to quit, take a quick minute here, and I can't spend too long, or this video is going to be 45 minutes instead of 30, and then people are going to call me a liar and not watch it, but I did want to rank the champions that are coming out in terms of how I think they're going to impact the meta in the early stages of the game, especially since we have a balanced patch scheduled to be in two weeks, so that's going to be interesting. This meta is going to be all over the place for two weeks, and then it, just as it starts to settle, boom, balance change. I love it. Um, so we have Fizz, Quinn, Vi, MF, Nautilus, Lee Sin, Twisted Fate, Maokai, Sejuani, Swain, Gangplank. I'm going to give a quick touch on why I put them all there. Fizz, this card seems really broken on paper. Quinn, Seems pretty broken on paper. The Scout Demacia stuff with standalone, great. Vi seems really good. A strong, challenging unit. I'm not sure how high she's actually going to stay because she's PNZ, and PNZ is kind of an awkward region to run if you're not running Ezreal. So Vi actually probably should be lower on this list, but she's so strong that I want to keep her up there. MF, good aggro champion. Nautilus, I think, is easily like the coolest champion. I can't wait to play with him. He's probably a little artificially inflated because of that. Lee Sin, I think, is just a really cool win condition for Ionia decks that want to run a secondary region without having that region contain their win condition, kind of like Harrowing Karma. Like, if you could just run your win condition within Ionia, I think that's something that those decks would like to do and streamline a little bit more, and I think Lee Sin gives them that option. Twisted Fate, he's really hard to level up. I don't think he's going to stick around for that long, but because the red card can potentially give you so much value, I think he's better than just about everybody else on here. Maokai, I might be being a little overly harsh on, and I can definitely admit that, but he just doesn't impress me on paper. I, he's definitely the one that I've heard the most about because he got revealed early, so I think he's a little overhyped because of that. People might have even forgotten about him at this point, but I think Nautilus is the better toss champion, and I think it's pretty undeniable that Nautil a Nautilus deck will beat a Maokai deck just because of how the champions interact. Maokai is going to come down first, obliterate my deck, then Nautilus is going to come down, put back everything that I had tossed earlier. Uh, obviously, it's not going to put back everything that Maokai obliterated, but because I'm tossing my own cards and I put them back, I think I'm smooth sailing from there. Uh, Sejuani just doesn't impress me that much. I think I'm underestimating her ability to just consistently wipe your opponent's board, but I don't know how often that's going to happen or how easy it is to get off. There's a lot of things that you can't judge until you actually start to get to build decks with them, and Sejuani's one of those cards. Swain just doesn't seem like he has a great home for me, uh, so I've been pretty, pretty unimpressed. And Gangplank, like I said, I'm going all in and just not thinking that the casks are a good strategy, and I'm you know, I might be proven wrong, but that's the whole point of videos like this is I give you my ideas and then I get proven wrong and you guys got to make fun of me in the comment section. So that's going to do it for me for my uh, Rising Tide set review. Thank you everybody so much for watching. My name is Boulevard. Contact details are below. Hit me up for your tournaments.